before starting a project like uh, this one, uh, it's always good to do a very deep inspection and figure out if it's worthwhile to do it or not. Sometimes repair can be so expensive that you might be better off keeping as a donor car and just getting another one. But in this case, I don't think I will find another one and I'm going to fix this one. Now with any project that I start, all my machines, they all get a name. And this guy, I'm going to call him, guess what? Yep, and he's going to be called Old Rusty. And you'll see why in a minute. But when I picked up the truck, the farmer told me that it doesn't run anymore. So let's have a look and see what the status is of the engine. Ah. So, spark plugs were removed before. Not a good sign because then humidity gets in and then the cylinder sides will corrode. Uh, let me take the Delco off the distributor so we have better access to the cylinders. I'm going to use a little uh, endoscope to check inside the cylinders how bad it is. Uh, I don't know what situation it is, but I'm afraid that the spark plugs have been removed since quite a while. So let's uh, see how that works. I don't know if you guys can see this on the scope, but that looks not too good. Mm, you see how corroded that is. You see all these uh, rusty spots? That's rust on the cylinders actually. Uh, the sides of the cylinders, not good. And that's where the piston is sitting. Right there. There's a bit of liquid inside because I already put a bit in. All right. This is not too good. And if you look careful, you can see the valves. These are valves. I feel a bit like a doctor now. All right. I think that the patient is dead. I will have to take the engine apart anyhow, but it's always good to do a quick check on all the other parts so you know at least what to expect once uh, you decided to go for the final repair. Um, everything is like stuck. Everything, you know, it's like, I mean, there should be at least one valve with a bit of play. This one has a bit of play. This one has no play. I mean, it's kind of unbelievable that there's no play at all on the valves. I don't know what they've done with this engine. But anyhow, um, a good trick uh, to DC cylinders is a mix of diesel and oil. And then just pour it in there. Of course, it won't start, but it's good because it will loosen up just pour a bit in it. Those I already have filled up. And this one I didn't either, so. You hear it running? Yeah, you can fill them up, it doesn't hurt, you know. So just fill up the cylinders with a mixture of diesel and oil. I always do it in a 50-50 and just let it sit in there for a few days and let it soak. At the end, you know, I have to take the engine apart anyhow, but at least they will DC a bit the pieces and maybe just maybe I can just turn it a little bit around. I'm not going to turn it too much around because I don't want to damage too much of the engine. But it didn't look too good with the um, little scope that we had inside. Anyhow, um, let's see what else we have to do on this truck. And rust is going to be our biggest problem. I mean, the bottom of the doors are totally rusted away. I mean, you know, it's gone, totally gone. Um, the steps are totally gone. You, know, you can just peel it off. Let me open it up. And the inside is totally rusted away as well. But it still closes, which is amazing. Uh, that will be quite a bit of welding because I don't think I'm gonna be able to get these door panels. They're quite thick, that's the good thing. 
So we'll have to cut it off like this and then put a weld a new piece in place. It's a bit of um, metal work, but not too bad because these doors are pretty simple, I would say. All right, let's take a few closer looks. So this is where the fender meets the doorstep and we'll have to cut all this out basically. Uh, and then just, you know, put a new metal plate in. Not that bad to do, uh, but it's a lot of labor, um, but it's not difficult. Where it becomes a little bit more tricky is at the bottom of, of the cabin. Uh, this is quite bad, but again, uh, it's a truck. So with a truck, you can do a lot of things. So let's have a look at the inner sills. So this is the inner sill and that's becoming a bit dramatic. As you can see, it's totally rusted away. Um, that's how it used to be. And for sure, this part came up like this. So this is how it used to be. So this is in a pretty bad state and that is all to be reconstructed. Uh, again, it's doable, but it's gonna take a lot of work, a lot of work. And this is where the sill joins up with the uh, outer edge of the cabin. And, and you can see even that is totally gone. But again, you know, you can cut, cut it all off on a certain height and then just bend some plates and then put new ones in. So I think um, it's going to be a major job to create all this metal work, but it's cheap. Metal is cheap. So, OK, well, the interior looks a bit tacky, but then again, it's all just cosmetics and it doesn't take that much to clean that up. In fact, I don't even think I will put upholstery in. I'm just probably going to take away the rust and then just paint it because after all it's a truck and I have no idea if actually it, if it had upholstery in, in those days. The windscreen is quite interesting I mean it's, it can open up you know you can release this and then you can actually see how you can move this. <laughs> this is funny this is really funny um, but the rubbers are, are gone so I need to replace the rubbers and that might be tough to find. Um, if you know someone that has antique rubbers uh, for old cars, let me know. The other thing is I'm missing the windows in the door frames. Don't know how I'm gonna get this. It looks like it's straight glass. So I might be lucky. It's not curved like in modern cars. So maybe I can find something and maybe the winding mechanism is still intact inside because the door panels, they still look quite all right at the top side. Okay, so, uh, Let's do an assessment uh, from the whole front nose and then we have a look in the back and then that should be good enough to know uh, where we are. So the good thing about the vehicle is that everything which is above the, uh, one feet above the ground is still intact and complete and not rusted away. So the bonnet is good, the nose is good, the fenders are good, the lights are good. So that's all pretty good. Even the rooftop is good. So there's a little bit of damage on it, but not too bad. But everything which is below 30 uh, centimeters or, or one foot uh, is kind of rusted away. It's like being sitting in water or high grass or something like that. I don't know. Anyhow, that is good. So now let's have a look on the chassis in the back and see how good that is or how bad that is. The truck has double wheels in the back uh, and that was obviously for the four ton load that it could take. It has extra heavy duty springs and in fact it has a double set and the whole chassis which we call a leather chassis is rock solid. I mean there is no rust on that chassis whatsoever so that was very well built at the time. I'll probably well take everything apart take the suspension of it take the, the rear axe of it and then just get it sandblasted and powder coated or maybe just paint a bit black epoxy. I don't know yet, uh, this is yet to be seen, but that's the good thing. The chassis is uh, very good, uh, so that's the most important part. And the engine is rebuildable, so the rest is cosmetics, guys. Cosmetics, cosmetics. So I'm getting eager to start working on it now that I've done a bit of an assessment. And there's one more thing we need to talk about. So this is the ladder chassis, and we will have to build on top of that the flat pad. Uh, that's going to be steel construction and then we'll put oak wood on it and then we varnish it. So that will be looking mighty good. I tried to rotate the engine but it, it didn't work. Um, 
I even used a spanner on it. It still didn't work. It's stuck. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually um, have overheated the engine and it just seized up. But we will take it apart. Now, the good thing about these old engines is you can always fix them because they have liners, as we call them. So you can actually remove the cylinders and just put a new cylinder in it or a liner. So that's not that bad. Anyhow, this is something for later. So the first steps I'm going to do now is to take all the bodywork off. Uh, the fenders, the bonnet, and the whole cabin will have to go off the vehicle so we can get it sandblasted and then we can start doing all the welding on it. Meanwhile, we'll sandblast the uh, chassis and have it powder coated or painted. I don't know yet exactly. And that should take us a long way. I also noticed that I'm missing the alternator. Well, in fact, it is an alternator. I should say dynamo because that's what they had in those days. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I know this wasn't very interesting, but it's an assessment I always do before I start the job. I'll see you later and thank you for watching.